I just had no idea one thing that massively shocked me. I'm not gonna lie to you, I'm not gonna sit here and tell you there isn't. Listen to what's coming up very carefully. I spent so much money on, phew. In medical school, we hardly ever have to. Anatomy is, Today I'm going to be talking about the 10 things that I didn't know before starting medical school and what they don't tell you about studying medicine and being at medical school. So I have got my iced coffee and I am going to be telling you the juicy secrets about medicine that people don't really talk about and people don't really understand before they actually start medicine. I think the first one is my biggest thing that I didn't realise and the thing that I'm most proud pleased about and that is that every day isn't nine to five I think in my head I thought okay medicine is so full-on you're gonna be always at uni even when you're at placement I thought okay it's gonna be like at least nine to five it's probably gonna be eight to six I think the thing with medicine which is very different to school is that you're in control a lot more of your timetable and kind of how you spend your time so for me and for most of my friends what we find most helpful is to do a bit of sort of hospital placement maybe go on a ward round maybe present some cases chat to some patients and then sometimes there's a lot of hanging around on placement sometimes there's not a lot to see sometimes doctors are just too busy so a lot of the hospitals will have a library attached to them they've got like an educational center and so you can go to the library even in the pre-clinical years before you start your clinical placements when you have lectures although some days might be really full-on I really, really doubt it's ever gonna be full on nine to five, maybe once or twice a week in first year, but definitely not every day. And all throughout medicine, you will always have Wednesday afternoons off, and this is for playing sport or just time to do anything else. So moral of the story is not every day is nine to five. Phew. So I feel like all of these secrets are kind of good things if you're looking to study medicine. So the next thing is that there aren't that many assignments. Like everyone always says, oh, medicine must be really, really stressful. You must have so much work to do. And yeah, while it's true, there can be a lot to learn. Remember you're studying at medical school to learn to be a junior doctor. You're not trying to learn to become a consultant. There really aren't that many assignments, essays or dead lines. In medical school we hardly ever have to write essays. Obviously I'm speaking for Kings. I know that if you go to Oxbridge for example it might be a bit different but on the rare occasion that we do have an essay it's probably going to be about 1000 to 1500 words which really isn't that much maybe a couple of pages the next one makes me laugh because i just had no idea how exams worked at medical school i go to kings so i can only talk on behalf of kings but i'm pretty sure quite a lot of medical schools are the same all of your exams are multiple choice questions which sounds really easy but isn't but also it's so much better than having six mark questions or four mark questions where you have to write like a paragraph at King's from first year up until final year we have multiple choice questions usually with five options now let me tell you the secrets about multiple choice questions so let's talk about the advantages so the advantages are if you literally don't know a topic you're gonna make an estimated guess there's a chance you'll get a mark whereas if it was just like write a one word answer if you literally have no idea you're just not gonna be able to write anything at medical school in these exams everybody will be making educated guesses for some of the questions don't think multiple choice questions are really easy because on the flip side when you have sort of studied a topic and a question comes up on that topic um, and then you see the five answers you can kind of question yourself and like second guess yourself quite often they're not like random five answers they're all kind of related and sometimes you're like but it could be that one and it could be that one as well having said that on the flip side there are some other exams that aren't multiple choice and these are OSCEs so I don't actually know what it stands for so O-S-C-E basically these are your clinical examinations so similar to your multiple mini interview which you do to get into medicine you have a series of stations and you have a certain amount of time to go to each station one of the stations might be taking a history from a patient so just communicating with the patient trying to work out maybe what's brought them to the GP or to the hospital Others might be practicing a clinical ex examination, so examine this man's cardiovascular system. Another one might be a 
administer a flu vaccine so all of these kind of practical things and communication things the next one is something that i am still reminding myself and still kicking myself that somebody didn't tell me this in first year anatomy is important no matter whether you want to be a surgeon, if you want to be a psychiatrist, a GP, a paediatrician, whatever you want to do, anatomy is so, so important. There are so many good resources online available, such as Teach Me Anatomy is a website that I really, really like and I'm trying to use myself now. So just from first year, start learning anatomy. Don't overcomplicate it from the start, just learn the basics and try and relate anatomy to the clinical things. I think I got so fed up of anatomy when I was just literally learning right here is all the blood vessels in the body and I was like but what does this mean so try and relate it to for example myocardial infarction a heart attack try and learn the um, blood vessels of the heart and then relate it to kind of the area of the heart attack in the heart if that makes sense so the next one is it's so important to set boundaries boundaries as to when you're going to study when you're going to revise because I'm not going to lie to you I'm not going to sit here and tell you there isn't loads to learn they're definitely is but you really have to focus and remember at medical school you are learning to be a junior doctor and current junior doctors or doctors who have been a junior doctor will tell you that you will learn so much when you start the job as a junior doctor so learn the common things keep it simple i like to keep medicine like a job nine to five and then i never ever work past seven o'clock whatever's happening never past seven o'clock because otherwise medicine can kind of take over your life i make sure that each week i have at least two evenings doing something fun like social like leaving my flat you need to set these boundaries early on and for me as well if i can do it i'm really lucky in the flat that i'm living at at the moment i don't have to have my desk in my bedroom and that just helps me to kind of split up rest and working some years i haven't been able to do this but i've been able to keep work more to the library and then when i came back home it would be time to relax and have fun and just a follow-up one from that medicine is not as hard as you think there can be a lot to learn but concepts wise it's not super duper hard i found chemistry a level so much harder yes if you're going to try and go into all of the sort of biochemistry behind each drug if you're going to try and learn all the sort of pathophysiology then yes it might start becoming more confusing the next one is something that i definitely fell into i fell into the trap you do not need to buy textbooks i turned up to first year i saw the reading list and thought right i need to order all of these books i spent so much money on books probably i want to say between 200 and 300 pounds it was that much and honestly i think i opened these books once we are so lucky to have brilliant libraries at university so if you do want the book you can always borrow it and you know if on the off chance you find that you're literally reading it like the bible and you're reading it every day then fair enough go and buy it but don't buy it first. There are so many good resources online, which are probably better than a textbook, arguably, especially because you don't want to be like lugging around a textbook around university from your flat to the library, for example, or when you go home. The next thing is that if you are an undergraduate, you will only have to pay for the first four years of your tuition. And for me, that meant student finance paying. So student finance gives you a loan and basically will cover your whole tuition costs of 9,200 pounds, I think it is. So literally you will sign up for Student Finance England. They will pay your tuition fees directly to the university. So you won't even see that 9,000 pounds, but the bit that I want to tell you about is after those four years, you do not have to pay. So I am doing six years. So three years of medicine, then an IBSC, an intercalated BSc, and then two more years of medicine. So that's six years. So my final two years, I am not paying for the NHS bursary is covering and this is something that I really didn't know beforehand so definitely worth thinking about as well first four years I also got a maintenance loan from student finance which paid for things such as rent or at least contributed to things and then after four years you can still get a little bit of maintenance loan from student finance a much smaller amount and you can also apply for the NHS bursary now student finance is a loan as in theoretically you will have to pay it back 
I say theoretically it's obviously it's a large amount of money and depends on your salary depends on a lot of things in the future whereas the NHS bursary is a bursary as in it's sort of free money it's money given to you to become a doctor as opposed to money that you have to pay back so something to think about food for thought I did not realize that finally this is arguably the most important thing I remember when I was at school being like oh my word medicine is so long it's gonna be at least five years maybe six years if I do an IBSC in between oh my word I'm gonna be so old it's just forever all my friends are gonna be working graduated living the best life it goes so fast honestly I cannot believe I'm going into my fifth year of university so don't let the length of time of studying medicine put you off it goes too quickly and I am very happy being a student I'm a little bit scared to actually start working life so let me know out of the 10 facts that I've given you how many you knew um, how many you didn't know what you found most interesting let me know if I've missed anything out um, and yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up, make sure you subscribe and turn the notification bell on so that you get notified when I release the next video.